Hello! What's up, everyone? It's me, your friend, Tanner Babcock here, coming at you once again with another brand new video. Uh, the topic of today's video is I'm going to be checking out some more Wayland compositors. I thought I would make a little bit of a sequel video to my uh, most popular videos so far, comparing different Wayland compositors. Um, <clears throat> in that video, I took a look at three different compositors. I took a look at Sway, took a look at River, and I took a look at Wayfire. Now, those are all some really great options uh, for uh, if you want to set up your own Wayland desktop. Today, I'm going to be showing off and talking about the Lab WC Wayland compositor. <clears throat> This is a floating or stacking Wayland compositor that is based on OpenBox. And uh, it is actually very compatible with uh, the OpenBox configurations. Um, it has a lot of uh, example startup files here. Like if you go into this repository and go into this docs folder, uh, this folder will have all of the files you need to uh, get up and running with Lab WC. You have this uh, auto start script. You know, that example auto start script. Uh, the main configuration file is called rc.xml, and that is right here. But yeah, because LabWC is a floating or stacking window manager, a.k.a. Wayland compositor, uh, there's no workspaces, really. Uh, you can just drag windows around. You can uh, resize them with your mouse. Uh, it has these nice window decorations up here. You have these little buttons for uh, minimize, maximize, and close. And uh, there's a little thing over here, too. There's this other menu that pops up when you click this, or if you right-click on uh, the title bar of the window, you'll get this little menu. So you can drag windows around. You can also snap windows, like how I just did that. If you drag a window up to the top edge of the screen, uh, LabWC will maximize it. It'll resize the window like that. You can also drag the window uh, to one side of the screen. Like, I'm going to go ahead and drag it to the right edge of the screen, and uh, it will snap like that, like a old school Windows 7. And uh, it works like that for the right side, too. Wait. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. So there's no workspaces, there's no tags or uh, anything like that, <clears throat> but you can minimize and maximize windows. The, uh, this status bar that I have down here is called Waybar. It's the same status bar that I use for Sway and River. And uh, it works great for LabWC. I would highly recommend uh, using LabWC with the Waybar status bar. Um, it has these little icons down here for the applications that I have up. And uh, it shows me these letters to uh, indicate the, the window state, if it's maximized or minimized. And also the color of this little uh, this clickable button here. <clears throat> these are all clickable buttons, these windows that pop up in the, the status bar there. And you just click on them and it brings up the window and the color of these little windows indicates the, uh, the window state also. Here's another terminal, the good old fashioned foot terminal that I use for every Wayland compositor. <clears throat> My NeoFetch still says sway, but that's all right. Uh, there's some other key bindings I have here, like a super M 
can uh, maximize and minimize. I think super n, yeah, super n minimizes, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still figuring out lab WC. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you the configuration files now. So here's Emacs. This file on the left right here is my uh, rc.xml. So the full file path for this file is your home slash dot config slash lab wc all lowercase slash rc.xml. It's configured in uh, the XML language, just like OpenBox. I don't think the configuration is exactly like one-to-one -one compatible, but uh, it is very compatible. I've never been a big fan of OpenBox, <laughs> to tell you the truth, but uh, I am a big fan of LabWC. Uh, it was pretty easy to set up. Um, Getting started with LabWC, you can just look up the documentation for like OpenBox and OpenBox themes and, you know, OpenBox configurations. And a lot of that stuff will work with LabWC. Uh, this part is exclusive to LabWC or uh, all Wayland compositors. This is the part of the configuration file where you uh, configure your inputs and your m mouse, mice, keyboards, uh, set the repeat rate. Here's some key bindings I have. Pavu control, pulse audio control for a uh, meta slash, super slash. Super comma, bring up my, uh, my music player here. And uh, alt, yes, alt, alt slash, no, alt comma, will bring up Emacs. <laughs> but uh, yeah, be sure to look at uh, this main page of the GitHub repository for LabWC for help. Because uh, everything's here. This little docs folder, all of the files that you need are going to be right in there. And you're going to want to copy those files into your slash config slash labrc directory. So here's my directory. Here's everything I have in my uh, dot config slash labwc. <clears throat> I have the rc.xml. I have a menu.xml. I have the, uh, the auto start script. I have this little script called environment, which I will show that to you all in just a second. And I have this file rc.xml.all. I will talk about that in uh, just a second too. We'll go back to Emacs. This file on the right of the split, which I'll go ahead and move my head there. This file on the right of the script is the, on the right side of the window, is the auto start script for LabWC. So this is just the same file that I copied from the GitHub repository. I changed all the stuff that I needed to change, like here's Waybar. Um, it loads my separate, I have a separate rice for lab WC, separate colors and X resources. It starts uh, Dunst for my notifications. It starts my uh, Sway Idle and Sway Lock lock screen. It starts the foot server with a custom configuration file. And it uh, figures out Pulse Audio, Emacs, and a tiny serve. And this WOB. It starts wob, which is my, uh, this little bar up here <laughs> that I use uh, to help me change the brightness and change the volume. This little bar up here is called wob, and I think that's a pretty cool tool for making your, uh, your window manager seem more like a desktop environment and seem more like a, a well-rounded, you know, experience. So there's the auto start 
script. I'm going to close out of rc.xml and I'm going to show off this other configuration file labwc slash menu dot xml and this is where all of the uh, the context menus for labwc are defined so uh, this this menu that pops up here when you right click on the the title bar of the window that's going to be defined right here in labwc it's a uh, you're going to want this menu tag with the id of client menu and that is going to be the context menu for the uh, the windows and the title bars and the window decorations <clears throat> And then this menu tag has the ID of root menu, you know, and that menu is just, uh, just this menu, just the main context menu that pops up if you right click anywhere on your LabWC desktop, it's going to bring up this little menu. Uh, I've been trying to figure out how to make this this little menu look nicer. Uh, I haven't got very far. I think right now it looks uh, it looks as nice as it's going to get. <laughs> uh, I'm just happy this little menu works and has this uh, reconfigure option. I'm not sure what that does exactly and uh, an exit option, which are defined down here. And a lot of these applications are the same applications that, uh, you know, I have assigned to my key bindings in the rc.xml file. But yeah, and that's menu.xml. So you are going to want to define two big menu tags. One is going to be the context menu for the title bars of the windows, and one is going to be the context menu for just the global menu for the desktop. And so, yeah, LabWC is pretty fun. I mean, it handles all this nice stuff. I'll show you some of these other files. I'll get out of auto start. I'll do another V split and I'll show a environment. Move my head here. So this file is home directory slash dot config slash lab WC slash environment. And uh, this is just where you set all of your environment variables that you want LabWC to, you know, keep active and persistent and make sure every Dbus and all of those programs can access these environment variables. Uh, I set XDG current desktop to Sway because you have to. <laughs> uh, I got Adweta cursor theme here. Uh, this cursor does grow a little bit bigger, but I really don't think you need a whole lot in this environment file, but you do need the environment file. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's another file in here I was going to look at. So we looked at that file called rc.xml. <clears throat> There's another file in that directory, the .config slash labwc directory, called rc.xml.all. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And what this is, this is just kind of like a, an example file where it lists all of the possible uh, preferences. Every single possible option that you could want to change with LabWC in your rc.xml, all of those options are going to be listed here in this rc.xml.all file. And this file is available in their GitHub repository in this docs folder. I think they have a pretty, pretty nice man page too, man labwc. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, and there's another file I forgot to talk about. This, uh, it's kind of weird. This dot. So to customize the appearance for LabWC, uh, you do it the same way you would customize OpenBox. And you got to go into this home slash dot themes slash uh, LabWC. And then you'll type ls. It's just called OpenBox3. Type ls. It's going to be theme RC. So the full file path to this file called theme RC is going to be your home directory slash uh, dot themes slash lab WC slash open box dash three. And in there, there will be a file called theme RC. Here's that theme RC file. This just has uh, all of the colors, all of the colors for borders, colors for these little buttons up here, uh, colors for the text. All of those colors and stuff, you're going to want to change those in this file, this theme RC file. But yeah, I really like LabWC. I mean, I don't like it as much as a uh, is Sway and River because it's not a, a tiling Wayland compositor. It's just a floating or stacking Wayland compositor. But uh, I still really like it. I mean, the first time I got OBS working on Wayland, I did a, a stream using LabWC and, you know, everything went fine. I'll close out of these files here. Get out of Emacs there. For all of my Wayland compositors, I use the same menu. This menu is called Fuzzle. It is made by the same guy that, uh, <clears throat> that made Foot, I think. Here's the repository for Fuzzle. Let's go ahead and look at this. Yeah. Same guy that made the foot terminal, same guy that made a yam bar. Has this program called Fuzzle. It's not on GitHub, it is on Codeberg. But yeah, Fuzzle is updated very regularly. <laughs> Uh, it's a really neat program. The way I use it is I try to make it work just like uh, the suckless D menu. So that's what my fuzzle does. But by default, it reads uh, the dot desktop files. And it sort of works as like an application launcher for uh, all of your available dot desktop files. <clears throat> so foot is a really good menu to use with any Wayland compositor, really. Uh, there are some other Wayland compositors that, uh, that I wanted to talk about that I won't be showing here. I really want to show Hyperland, but I just, <laughs> I can't get Hyperland working on my Void Linux machine right now. I just can't, I don't know how. I don't know how to get it working. Other Void Linux users, they say that they can't install Hyperland. It's just too it's just too cutting edge, I think. I mean, I can't compile it. There's no binary packages. Uh, I really want to try out Hyperland though, and you know, people have been telling me to try out Hyperland, but this video, I'm just going to be showing LabWC, and in a few minutes, I'm going to show the, uh, <clears throat> the compositor called DWL. But I really wanted to look at Hyperland. Everyone loves Hyperland right now. And uh, I also wanted to look at another compositor called Hikari. I wanted to look at this compositor called Hikari, but I could not find a suitable status bar for it. Like every, every status bar that I tried to use with Hikari, just nothing would work. 
but uh, it's a tiling, tiling Wayland compositor with workspaces. Uh, it's a little weird. I can get it running, but it's not pretty. <laughs> it's not a nice experience, and I just decided it really wouldn't be worth it to try to configure Hikari and show off Hikari in, in the video, but I'm just going to show their website and talk about it a little bit. Hikari is a pretty cool project. It's, a, it's designed to be a Wayland compositor, not for Linux, but for FreeBSD. It was developed on a, the FreeBSD operating system for that operating system, but it does work really well for me for Void Linux, even though there's no status bar or anything, and uh, it works on these other Linux distributions too. So yeah, LabWC, Hikari, Fuzzle, there's all kinds of awesome stuff out there. If you can't get it working, I mean, just try it. Google, read documentation, you can ask me for help. <laughs> anyway, that's LabWC. It's kind of a fun little compositor. I'm going to go ahead and show off my GitHub sponsors profile right now. I did update my GitHub sponsors recently. Uh, I added more options, I added more information, and I posted uh, more of my own personal projects in this, uh, this description here. So there's, if, if there's anyone out there at all who wants to give me some money, donate me some money so I can make some better work, so I can make better YouTube videos, and make better content, and also uh, sponsor the work of others, please, please give me some money through my GitHub sponsors. I would really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to give me a monthly subscription, you could choose to give me $4 a month. You could choose to give me $8 a month. You could choose to give me $16 a month. Or you could give me 32 You guys should also check out my website at tannerbabcock.com. There's a lot of helpful Linux resources on this website. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it can teach you a lot of stuff. Anyway, I'm going to close out this part of the video now, and I'm going to log out, and I'm going to fire up, uh, fire up DWL. And I'm back. So, this Wayland compositor is called DWL, also known as DWM for Wayland. It's just like DWM. Uh, as you can see, it looks just like DWM. It works just like DWM. It has the, uh, the suckless model of compiling and changing the config file and recompiling that, you know, those suckless guys are so crazy about. So here's DWL. Here's the repository for DWL. Um, here's all of its features and stuff. And here's how to build it. So DWL, you are going to want to compile it. Learn how to compile it. You're going to be compiling it a lot. Uh, it really took me a while to get up and running with DWL. I mean, there's just a lot of moving parts you have to think about. Uh, DWM comes with its own status bar, but DWL does not. So, I'm going to show you what status bar I am using with DWL. This bar is called sum bar. <laughs> uh, my way bar does not work with DWL. It says somewhere that way bar can work with DWL, but I never got it working. I really think you should just stick to sum bar because this is the only status bar that I could find to use with DWL that actually shows you the, uh, the tags, the currently selected tag, the little squares, and uh, this, uh, this status bar here is a part of it. Uh, you can't click on it like in DWM, but it does show, I mean, what's going on. It tells you the mode, the layout, if I do a super M, that will change it to the monocle layout. 
and I do super T again, that will bring it back to the, uh, the tiling layout. Let's start up H top here. Like a river, the compositor river, if it's in the tiling layout and you uh, hold the super key and you do a right click drag, that will turn the window into a floating window. And then you can just drag it around like this. But yeah, DWL is a lot of fun. I mean, I've never been that crazy about DWM. I love ST, I love D menu. Uh, I like certain things about DWM, but I don't know if I could use DWM like every day. I mean, I've tried patching it, I've tried, you know, looking at other people's builds of DWM. Uh, DWL kind of works the same way. There are patches. Like if you go to the wiki here, it'll tell you what status bars to use, and a lot of these just will not work. <laughs> but here are, uh, here's all the patches. It has a lot of the same patches that DWM has. Uh, I tried to patch DWL with some of these. It was not. <laughs> I'm not ready to open up that can of worms again. So this DWL is very vanilla. It's very out of the box. Uh, only things that are running with it is a sum bar which is this uh, status bar up here, and also some blocks, a fork of DWM blocks designed to be used with a some bar and DWL. So that's what you see up here, showing my, I have the time there, I have my free disk space, I have uh, how much memory is being used, I have the CPU, and I have the volume. So, here's config.h of DWL. It looks just like uh, the config.h for DWM. These colors are defined a little bit differently. These use, uh, I don't know, these decimal points, 0 0.3, I don't know. <laughs> These, uh, these tags are here, it has the list of tags. You can uh, supply your own rules, your window rules, and it will filter out the, uh, all of the windows that are in focus or that are open by uh, its app ID. It can be kind of tricky on Wayland to figure out the app ID if you're just used to using X11 and running the tool Xprop and then you just click a window and you find out oh that's the class and that's the title for Wayland you gotta find out the app ID here's the symbols for the layouts yeah I really didn't change a whole lot in this uh, config file except for some of the key bindings so I can open my terminal and my browser and everything but so yeah that's the config for DWL you also have to start DWL in a funny way I have the startup script here SDWL where I just set some environment variables you have to start DWL. If you use some bar, you kind of have to start it in this funny way. You have to use the the S option. And then you have to put some bar in the quotes after the S option when you start DWL from the command line. So I'll go back to git. I'll go into this some bar repository. And the configuration file for some bar is going to be in this source directory. You type ls, and it's this uh, config.hpp. So here's some bar. I actually put uh, the icons for the tag names in, uh, in this some bar configuration. 
the colors in this file, you know, are defined differently too. It's an even different, even more unusual <laughs> way of uh, specifying colors than we just saw before. But <laughs> those are the colors. Uh, I made an additional color scheme here for color status so that I could use uh, an additional color scheme for this, this blue up here. You know, I just defined that, and I want my status bar to look different from the, the window title and the tags and everything, so... That's the sum bar. If you want to compile sum bar, you have to do a Mason build. And if you already built it, you'll type a Mason dash dash reconfigure build. You know, and that will reconfigure the the builds for some bar. And then you're going to want to go into the build directory. Type ls to look at what's in there. And to actually compile some bar, you are going to want to use the tool ninja. So please make sure you have ninja installed if you are going to be uh, working with dwl, with some bar, with some blocks. Uh, you're gonna need Ninja. It says no work to do. RM Sumbar, and then I'll type Ninja, and it compiles Sumbar, and <clears throat> then after you do that, you'll just type a sudo cp Sumbar into user bin Sumbar. It's not going to let me do that right now, but that's how you install the, uh, the compiled suckless tool after compiling it. You're just going to want to install it like that. And here's some blocks. <laughs> going to open up blocks.h, which is where you put all of your icons and all of your commands that fetch the... Uh, the status bars display. So you're going to want to have to type all of the commands to fetch whatever you want. You can probably just look at DWM blocks. Uh, it's very similar to how that works. You can look at other people's scripts, other people who use DWM or uh, DWM blocks and look at how they did things. Uh, some blocks you're just going to want to compile with a make clean and you'll type make. That will compile some blocks. It's just one source file, but... And DWL, that's how you compile DWL too. You'll just type make clean, and then type make. And that will compile DWL. So yeah, even though it's not my first choice of Wayland Compositor or Window Manager, uh, <laughs> I do kind of like DWM, but I really like DWL. Uh, I never got around to patching it or working on it in that way. I'm just using the bare vanilla DWL, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, I highly recommend it. Well, anyway guys, thanks for checking out my Wayland video. Uh, I hope you guys got something out of it. I really just wanted to show off these new compositors and I had someone ask me about the ask me to do a video about the LabWC compositor, so I thought I could do a video about that. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for watching guys. Remember to check out my website, check out my GitHub sponsors profile, and if you really liked this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Uh, follow me on GitHub, check out my GitHub pages, give me some forks, give me some stars. I'd really appreciate that too. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot guys.